In this last lecture on operations management, we're going to talk about managing quality. This last lecture in this quality module, or this uh, operations module, we're going to talk about quality. Like cost, quality is an absolutely essential element of operations management. As you might, as you know, defective products can quickly cause a firm to lose its customer satisfaction ratings, to lose customers, and ultimately to fail. Quality reflects the degree to which the product or services meets the expectations or the requirements of the customers. Therefore, understanding the customer needs and the quality of what is being delivered are important elements of operations. It can be difficult because it depends upon customer perceptions as well as the product itself and how the product meets those expectations. It can be especially difficult to measure quality characteristics in the case of a service rather than a product because so much of that relates to the interaction the customer has with the company. A company has to decide exactly which characteristics to measure what it considers most important for satisfying its customer needs and then determining how to go about measuring them. J.D. Powers made a reputation for managing or for being providing customer service in the automobile industry initially. Uh, there, the fuel economy of an automobile and its reliability can have a lot of impact on on customers' sense of satisfaction with a with a with a particular company, and of course of safety, and these can be measured with some some precision. Uh, although automakers rely on their own measures of vehicle quality, they also look to independent sources, and JD Powers is one of those. The JD Powers rating became really well known to consumers and had a lot of impact on the rate of sales for various uh, various uh, companies, depending depending upon. The, their quality rating. This, these perceptions could say a lot about what, what an organization, how well an organization is perceived by its customers. Something to consider is these outside quality measures. Quality is important, and so therefore we need to come up with ways to manage that. And these are co what we collectively referred to quality control measures. These are the processes that are used to maintain and establish the appropriate uh, quality standards and deliver on standard of that standard of quality over time. It's become a major aspect of organizations. This was particularly in light of the intense foreign competition that began with Japanese uh, cars and other products in the 1980s, but continues to the pre in the present as the global supply chain places more emphasis on how uh, or, or has the, has more of an impact on how customers can perceive uh, the quality impacts they receive whenever they're buying their products and services. Um, example of the battery on a recent cell phone was a quality problem that has caused uh, significant issues uh, with the Samsung company. And of course, there was uh, uh, different kinds of health breakouts in some fast food restaurants that likewise cause quality problems. When a company takes the product correctly, excuse me, makes the product or service and does it correctly uh, from the beginning, it eliminates the need for rework and to uh, eliminate defective products or repair them. So quality really occurs all the way along the way at every step of the process. It's not something that you can wait till the end to check because if you wait till the end, you've essentially processed a product which you could have identified much earlier in the, in the process and that all costs money. Um, one method for which companies uh, use to, to address this, this type of quality control is called statistical process control. This is a system which collects and analyzes information about the production process to pinpoint quality processes or quality problems that are occurring across in different locations or in different parts of the production system. And this could be across various companies and certainly across many different locations when a company has a broad um, and broad geographic and a broad international supply chain. Regardless of whether a company has a total quality management or two QM, TQM program for quality control, it still has to determine the quality, the standard of quality that it is attempting or that it is desiring to meet and then make sure you measure to meet that standard. 
product specifications and quality standards have to be set so that the company can create a product that will complete, compete in the marketplace. Production facilities must be designed so that they can produce quality products and also that those at the steps of the process can be measured along the way to verify that the quality standards are being met. They can be incorporated, that is quality and standards can be incorporated into the service business as well. Once the desired quality characteristics, specifications, standards and the like have all been identified, stated and documented and then put in place in measurable terms, the next step of course is inspecting the outcome to make sure those standards are being met. This is a general theme of operations, which is you must get feedback that the process you've put in place is actually meeting the expectations of both the customers and the operations management personnel who put these standards in place. Gathering a lot of data, a lot of feedback is an important part of designing a quality process. There are international organization, international standards that are also in effect. This allows supply, global supply chain to have many different players because these certification processes can cause, the individ, cause a company to contract with somebody else that has, for example, an ISO 9000 <clears throat> certification and therefore be comfortable that quality standards are going to be in their supply chain. This international organization called the International Organization for Standardization or ISO has created a series of standards uh, ISO 9000, which I just mentioned, is designed to ensure customer quality standards are met. That includes companies that buy from ISO manufacturing facilities as part of their supply chain. Companies must pass a rigorous certification process to do this, but in some industries, certification is needed at even more detailed level. The ISO 9002 was established for service pro providers, for example. ISO 1400 is a comprehensive set of environmental standards that encourage companies to conduct businesses in a cleaner, safer, and less wasteful way, providing a uniform set of global standards. The goal of the ISO 14000 standards is to promote a more uniform approach to environmental management and to help companies attain and measure improvements in their environmental performance. It is a relation it is the relationship to the environment and it's related to the sustainability of the environment that type that aspect of quality as well. Inspection is an import, another important element of uh, the quality control process. As we mentioned earlier, one of the key questions is how many items do you inspect all of them or some sampling? Inspection reveals whether products meet quality standards. Inspecting purchased items as they come in through, uh, through your input cycles is to make sure that the materials that enter your system, that's an important element as well, uh, but also expect the inspecting work in progress items along the, supply, along the production process is another important aspect of, of uh, inspection as well as, of course, inspecting finished goods. Determining how many to, to uh, sample is an important question because inspection procedures can be expensive. In fact, in some cases, they can destroy the product. We've all seen the safety inspections of automobiles where the car is actually crashed. You s clearly cannot crash all of the automobiles that come off the assembly line. There has to be some sort of a sampling. So you have to understand how much sampling leads to optimum quality outputs. In such cases, it's usually, in many cases, it's usually desirable to test only a small sample. Um, if that sample passes, then you may assume that all of the items or most of the items coming off of that in that lot have a similar quality, um, quality level. Nevertheless, there will always be a risk of making an incorrect conclusion accepting a population that actually does not meet standards because the sample was not appropriately measured or the sample was incorrect. Or you might reject a population that does meet the standards because of the sampling 
problem that would occur, which sample. You might have picked just the defective items, for example. So there's always risks associated with sampling, either positive or negative. Um, but also, there's a, it's a lot of statistical that goes, statistical analysis that goes into this to determine the optimal amount based upon the number of errors that you're allowed to have get through the end, the end uh, into the marketplace, as well as the costs associated with those various uh, sampling costs, the, the, the various sampling procedures. Finally. We want to integrate the operations and supply chain management stories together. Management, managing operations and supply chains is a complex and challenging activity, as you had, as you probably identified. It is an increasing every day as the supply chain becomes more and more global, and even the production process is often global, either within companies or across firms. Many independent organizations are all involved in producing final products and services, and many of them are, it will impact the level of quality that is achieved when the product finally makes it to the market. Management supply, managing supply chains requires constant village, vigilance and the ability to make quick tactical changes in the process, perhaps even switching manufacturing of certain parts to a different country if there's political risk of some kind. Managing the various partners involved in supply chain operations is important because many stakeholders hold the firm responsible for appropriate contact related to their product quality. This requires that the company exercise oversight over all of the suppliers involved in producing a product despite the challenges of monitoring, monitoring global operations and global supply chains across multiple comp continents. There are many steps that businesses can take to manage these risks. All companies who work with global suppliers should adopt the global supply code of conduct that ensures that it's that, that it can it is effectively communicated and ensure that it is effectively communicated among all the parties. Supply chain procurement managers work together to make operational decisions to ensure the selection of the best suppliers from an ethical and a cost effectiveness standpoint. And finally, customers must perform regular audits on its suppliers and take action against those found to be in violation of the company's standards. Companies need to set up a global supplier code of conduct to make sure that everywhere along the process, the nothing is being done that will impact the final, the, the face of the product to the customer and cause that company to somehow lose credibility or to produce a product that does not have quality either in its uses or in how it was produced. Um, operations management, supply chain management, all of these uh, processes we've talked about, it's really the core of what business is doing as it transforms raw materials and resources like labor and human capital into products and services that cause, the, cause people's lives to be better and they can consume products and services that are useful and that they're worth uh, they they are willing to pay uh, significant parts of their income in order to purchase that's the conclusion of this this uh, module on operations management I um, hope you'll join us in some discussion online you know, on Moodle about some questions which I'll uh, get to in a moment So I hope you'll join in a discussion on Moodle uh, about several different questions. Questions I'd like to you to discuss are, in what industry would the fixed position layout be most efficient? What about the process layout? When is that efficient? Or the product layout? Use some examples that you can think of. Secondly, maybe define supply chain management, summarize the activities it involves and some of the complications and challenges. Thirdly, Compare and contrast a manufacturer versus a service provider in terms of operations management. What's different? What's the same? And lastly, what criteria would businesses or do businesses use when deciding how to locate a plant? Think about that a little bit. What kinds, for an example, different kinds of products and services and, and give us some thoughts about that. And let's have a good discussion online. I look forward to seeing you on Moodle. See you at the next module.